So breaking news, David Zasloff, the new CEO of Warner Brothers, realizes that the company is going under and he's going to start regurgitating all the old successful movies and everyone is supposed to put their finger in their mouth and be like, oh my God, we've got a new Lord of the Rings movie. <laughs> stupid i'm not one bit excited i've got absolutely no interest in this i don't care if you wheel out peter jackson philippa boynes fram watch doesn't matter to me because i had the exact same experience a few weeks ago with war of rohirrim where the news came out and i was thinking okay this is trash because rings of power clearly was disrespecting the source material and the talking estate actually played along with these lunatics and led them to believe that they were actually making lord of the rings when in fact it was just a bunch of cultural Marxism and identity politics. What I find really interesting, and I'm going to put it up here in a few seconds, is we have a lot of mainstream outlets kind of underhandedly digging at the rings of power and throwing little jabs at them. As the dust settles and the gaslighting that was propagated by the media for the rings of power, the Tolkien masterpiece, as that starts to subside and the dust settles, you have the New York Times, New York Post, and a bunch of other media outlets coming out saying, yeah, no one really watched that show. Reviewers kind of liked it but no one else watched it and after looking into the war of Rohirrim and seeing some of the comments made by producer Jason DeMarco about how much of a trash fire Rings of Power was I was thinking this might be actually good and I made a few videos about it and I was quite excited and then subsequently after that watching Jason DeMarco's Twitter timeline I lost all hope the guy's a complete and utter left-wing nutjob he's a freak <laughs> All he does is propagate hate across Twitter. This guy is sick in the head and you're going, he's making the new Lord of the Rings and I'm supposed to be excited for that? Are you serious? It's kind of the same situation as Star Wars where I was a massive fan for 30 years and then we had The Force Awakens, then we had The Rise of Skywalker and then I really went, okay, I'm done with this. And then all these new shows started coming out and in the back of my mind, there's some part of me telling myself that you should be excited because this is Star Wars. You should be excited. Let's give it another go. Let's watch the book of Boba Fett, one of my all-time favorite characters. Trash fire. So we have to learn to really evaluate our expectations when it comes to these properties. And that was absolutely destroyed with the War of Rohirrim. I read this article and it didn't really do anything for me in terms of excitement levels. But what did trigger a little bit of intrigue for me were these stories like the New York Post. Why making Lord of the Rings movie is a terrible idea. And I wanted to see exactly what they meant by that. So basically what they do in this article, the run cover for the Rings of Power, that's the most recent disastrous failure that they've had with this specific property, is that they mentioned The Hobbit. And again, we know there was massive studio interference with The Hobbit, and it was just too long. Should have been done in one movie, and it could have been done in two and a half hours. So it, it is what it is. And again, it's quite like the Star Wars situation, when you see the Book of Boba Fett, you see the Bad Batch, you see Rey Skywalker, and you say to yourself, if I go back as far as the prequels, which we all kind of hated at the time, all of a sudden, they start to look a little bit better. And I think that we'll find ourselves in that situation with these upcoming Lord of the Rings films and accompanied by The Rings of Power. We'll find ourselves looking back at The Hobbit saying, it wasn't too bad. New York Post says that Amazon dropped 715 million on Lord of the Rings Rings of Power TV series on Prime last year. Some outlets reported that it cost as much as 1 billion. Uh, reviews range from respectable to wretched and audience didn't respond well to it either. Some blamed the bashing on a racist online backlash against diverse casting but do you know a single person who's ever watched the Rings of Power? No, I don't. So with the little caveat of the, the racist online backlash slotted in there just for a little bit of a cushion, they still go on to say that the Rings of Power was an absolute and utter trash fire and no one watched it. Let's not pretend that the reviewers were giving it a respectable score and everyone else just didn't care about it. It was trash. They ran cover for it. That's what they do. If we jump over here to the Independent, they're saying that no one wants a new Lord of the Rings movie. Why can't franchises die anymore? And I was like, okay, this is an interesting take. If we look at the author, looks like a cock soy boy, so this could be an interesting turn of events to see what this guy's talking about. Whether we want it or not, we're getting more Lord of the Rings. The press release that announced it read like a work of a cyborg. The opportunity to invite fans deeper into the cinematic world of Middle Earth is an honor. This guy goes on to talk about all the big franchises, John Wick, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, even The Last of Us, and how they keep regurgitating same old stories, nothing original is done, Transformers, nobody watched four 
4, 5 and 6 guess what we're getting a part 7 and he goes on to make the correlation between that and do people actually want to revisit Lord of the Rings and I find that quite interesting if we jump over here we see that Screen Ranter saying that Warner Brothers just destroyed the Rings of Power and they talk about similar timelines between the movies that are coming out of Warner Brothers and that a lot of the actors from the original Peter Jackson trilogy will make a return which will detract viewers from the Rings of Power and it's like are we at the situation now where we get excited for a new Lord of the Rings movie coming out of Warner Brothers with Peter Jackson attached? Or is it going to be a situation where these are new Lord of the Rings movies for a new generation? And we know what that means. That means race swapping, gender swapping, and just infusing as much absolute and utter mental illness into a property as possible. I have zero interest in that. If they decide not to do any of that and they stick to source material and they do what Peter Jackson did 25 years ago, then you can almost be guaranteed that they will have to use a blanket of PR wokeism. That's the tactic you see used with the bigger movies, the most successful movies in the last few years, the likes of Avatar and the likes of Maverick, where they were devoid of any real wokeness or left-wing ideology. It was pretty much just a story told in the right way and it blew up. Billion dollars in the bank, no worries. But the directors and the producers and the actors felt the need to come out and express themselves as these diverse Diverse, inclusive people and you have these tidbits coming out from the likes of James Cameron and from Tom Cruise. Cruise decides to boycott the BAFTAs because there's not enough inclusivity whatever and you have James Cameron saying he cut out 15 minutes of violence that was too extreme to show in this movie and I really don't want to uh, propagate or promote that sort of violence but here's a three and a half hour movie that I just made that's filled with it anyway but just to placate the left-wing media who will shut down this film before it even starts I'm just going to come out and be a little bit woke. That's where we could go with the Lord of the Rings movie. So in terms of the news coming out yesterday, zero interest, zero excitement, an absolute nutter nodding burger. Let me know your thoughts down below. Cheers.